Amen. Thank you, girls. Woo! Man, yeah. We have got a whole lot of talent locked up in this church. And um, hopefully over the weeks, months, and years to come, as our young people get older and as, as we develop more, that um, we can put those on display week in and week out. And uh, I just love to watch. I love to watch our girls dance before the Lord. It's such a, an incredible way of speaking to, to God about our love that we have for him. Because it's done in many different ways. It's done in, in words. It's done in deeds. It's done in song, and it's also done in dance. And I know that the Lord is blessed when he looks down and sees his children honoring him and blessing him. Dad, I want to talk to you today, but I don't, I don't want to just talk to the dads. I want to talk to all the men in this room, from the young to the old. Because as I thought about you this week, as I thought about us this week, I thought to myself, what is it, what is it that I need right now in my life? What is it that most men need in their life? Especially at, considering the last year and a half and and all the, the craziness, all the confusion. I, I know I, I talked to so many dads who, who their hours were cut at work or even lost their jobs. And were trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Try to figure out how to continue to provide for their family the way they've always provided. I know some men even, even took on second jobs and to try to make up this deficit of finances just so they could support their families just so they could do the things that dads do that men do but i don't want to i don't want to set aside some of our incredible ladies single parents single family homes that find the same kind of needs that today we speak about with our fathers on this father's day so today I want us to talk about finding rest for our souls. Finding rest in the times when we've grown weary so that we can forge ahead to take hold of that which is next. Putting our hands to the plow and as Jesus said, not looking back. I've talked to many dads who have said, I wish, I wish it was the way it was two years ago, three years ago, five years ago. I wish I could get back to the same thing because I knew I had a job. I knew my job was secure. I knew I was bringing in X amount of money. I knew I could provide for my family these different things. And, and so when I was thinking about all these things today, I was, and I was thinking about the songs we sing, the lessons we learn, and, uh, and the stories we've heard, and even have experienced some of God's profound provisions, the Lord took my mind back to Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides but I want you to listen today. I want you to listen to these words today. I want you to understand what the Lord is saying because I think all of us realize, or most of us realize, if you're a child of God and accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, I think you fully realize today that God's going to be there to help you put a roof over your head, food on the table, supporting your family, helping you with the finances, and His hand of protection upon us and His word to guide us through each and every day. Yeah, see what I mean? That's, that's Jehovah Jireh. That's the Jireh that I know. That's the Jireh that I've preached. That's the Jireh that I've talked and, and taught. That's the provider that, that I've known all these years. But I struggle. That's my confession today. I struggle when it comes to Jehovah provider for rest. Last night I, I went to bed. I always try to go to bed early on Saturday night so that my brain is fresh and ready for the next day. And I laid there in bed last night. I went to bed at 10 o'clock like I typically do because I'm old now. Anything past 10 o'clock and it's just not good the next day. 
And um, the next thing I know, 11 o'clock came, and I was laying there, and then midnight came, 12, 15 came, and I thought, okay, this is crazy. I can't get my brain to turn off. So you, you ever, when you can't get your brain turned off because you're thinking about your jobs, your finances, the next steps for you and your family, and how to take care of your kids, how to take care of your grandkids, all these things rushing through your head, and you're laying there, so you try to come up with something that is not going to make you crazy. Now, let me share with you what I, what I think about. When I'm trying to go to sleep, and, and all these things have overwhelmed me, I think about riding my bike. And I think about, I'm out on my bike, and I'm riding through the trails, just having a great time, no one around, enjoying it. And all of a sudden, I see a bag off to the side. And I think, hmm, that's an interesting looking bag. I think I'll stop and check it out. Now, this is a dream I, I try to force myself into all the time. And so I go back and I open the bag up and guess what's in it? Money. Lots of money. And you know, last night I was laying there and I started to laugh at myself. And because years ago, it used to be, man, a million dollars in that bag. It's grown. Okay. <laughs> So then I'm thinking to myself, there's five million. No, there's $10 million in this bag. Do you know what I can do with $10 million? And I start to think to myself as I'm laying there, the things I could spend it on, the things I could do, the things I could t take care of my family with, it is money. And then I think to myself, oh my goodness, $10 million is not enough. And I end up driving myself even crazier. Then before this goofy dream, but I still do the dream, hoping one day that I'll fall asleep content. But I'm never going to find contentment in this world. I'm never going to find contentment in millions of dollars or new discoveries. I have to find contentment, as Paul would say, in my day-to-day -day life. And, and the problem I have, I don't know about you men, but the problem I have is I think too much in the physical. I'm always thinking about in the physical. Lord, help me with putting the roof over my kid's head, clothes on their back, food in their stomach. Help me, help me with utilities. Help me, help me, help me, help me with these physical things. But have you ever considered Jehovah Jireh? as a spiritual rest from our labors, from our thoughts, from the things that perplex us, that keep us awake, the things that keep us from being everything that God wants us to be. Today, I want us to look at Jehovah Jireh, our provider, in a little different light. A little different light. I want us to look at him as the God of peace, as Jesus said. But more than that, the God who provides us rest. The God who provides us rest in our labors, rest from our worries, rest from the chaos of the world. Today, I pray that in this next few minutes and for the days to come, you would tap into Jehovah Jireh, the provider of peace. And I want you to see this in Matthew chapter 11. So if you have your Bibles open to Matthew chapter 11, I'm going to read this very, very, very familiar story again. And this is what Jehovah Provider is saying to not only the men here today. Please, it's Father's Day. I'm directing this at our men, our dads, our fathers, our stepdads, future dads but also for each and every one of us in here, because moms, I know, though this may not be your day, significant day, I know that you are also in a place where you have concerns for the same things that we have. So why not today let us focus on what Jehovah Provider can do for us all. Amen? And let's, let's hear his words on this. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, Jesus speaking... Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let, my, let me teach you. 
because I am humble and gentle, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. May the Lord bless his words today. May he bless his words to our hearts that we might not only hear these words, but receive these words, and then to live these words in our life. See, in this passage, it is littered with God in the first person. It is littered with us taking our focus off of ourself and placing it on the Father. He uses the words I and me and my and I am mine when he talks about us coming into a spiritual rest, coming into a soul's rest, coming into a rest from our day-to-day labors and our day-to-day worries and finding the peace of God that he has promised us in Jesus Christ. The Hebrew writer writes these words, There remains a rest for the people of God, for the one who will enter, for the one who will enter Sabbath rest. Let me rephrase that for you so that you don't think rest is only on Sunday. Instead, hear it like this. For the one who will enter spiritual rest, one who will cease from their own works. Notice it doesn't say that we won't work. It says from our own works. But just as God did from his on the seventh day, his sabbatical, his spiritual rest from his physical work. And that's what we had to identify, church. That's what we had to identify, men. Sometimes we think to ourselves, well, I'm working six days a week. I'm working two jobs. I'm trying to make all the ends meet. I need Sunday to sleep. I need Sunday to sleep in. Pastor, you don't understand. No. Sometimes I think you don't understand. God wants to provide you the kind of rest that you need for the works that you're doing, for pulling together the ends so that they meet. But he needs you to do it in a spiritual manner. He needs you to take that time to be spiritual, to enter into that spiritual rest. I I know a few years ago, a few years back, when when the oil and gas industry was just going crazy and, and people were working overtime and extra overtime and, and they were, it was amazing. And I was, I was talking to uh, men and women who were working, you know, 60 and 70 hours a week because they were bringing in so much money and it was so irresistible. And I would always ask them this question, did you make your kids baseball game? Did you make your kids dance? Do you know what your kids are doing in school? Do you know what they're being taught? Have you invested the same amount of time into your children and your grandchildren as you have in the work? As Miley was dancing across here. I know for you, Jessica and Brian and Aaron... Weren't they just babies? Just like a couple weeks ago? And now here they are, worshiping the Lord in dance. And as I watched Miley, I was reminded of Brittany on her wedding day when I sang this song to her. And She came down the aisle and I had her sit on my lap as I was singing. And I was in a rocking chair. That was just last week, I'm sure. This time is going fast. And it's going faster and faster as we age. Dad, don't miss your opportunity you'll always you'll always need more money than we have 
But God will provide exactly what we need. Don't take it in your own hands. Make, the, make sure that you're invested in your kids, in your grandkids, in your children. Because before you know it, they're going to be grown and they're going to be gone. So I ask you today, have you grown weary of your schedule? Have you grown weary of the unknowns? Are you losing sleep too over concerns that have invaded your thoughts? If you have, and you feel like your strength is being zapped, and, and you're finding it harder and harder to find that hope each and every day, please hear what Matthew has to say to you today, to me today, to us today, to the world today that is working ho so hard physically, so consumed with the things of the world, so consumed with the things that I have to do, that there's not much room for I am in our life. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, we're going to find two principles that I want us to begin to apply to our life today. Knowing that Jehovah provides the things like the roof over our head, food in our bellies and clothes on our back. He's going to provide those kind of things with us. He provides the air that we breathe and the water that we drink. But he also provides rest from our labor in peace in the midst of our worldly storms. So before we can understand this principle, these two principles for soul's rest, in verse 28 it says, the first thing we need to do is come to Him. Why do we always use God last? Why is it always the last thing we think about when we have a need, when, when there's something that has to be taken care of. And that doesn't mean in every situation. But if you was to stop and think about the situations at hand, the things that are going on in your life right now, at what point did you surrender that to God? At what point, as Matthew said, did you come to Him seeking spiritual assistance? And ceasing from your physical labors. Jesus is our source. If we are believers, if we are children of God, He is our source. Galatians 2.20 Because I have been crucified with Christ, I no longer live. But Christ lives in me in the life which I now live in. The flesh, I live by faith, spiritually. I live by faith in the Son of God. Once I, once Dave West has been crucified, I, Dave West, no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I am still Dave West. I am still the physical representation of, of who God created. But my thoughts are different. My actions are different. My words are different. Because I've entered into a spiritual way of life. But that spiritual way of life means taking time to stay plugged into the source. Taking time out of my day, taking time out of my week, taking time out of my life to stay connected. So that I will not have the, the kind of frustrations, the, the kind of trepidations that I have about the future. So once we have come to Him, once we have moved from the physical being to the spiritual being, here's the two principles I want us to apply. But it all begins with you making and taking the first step. He invites you to come to Him. He invites you to be a part of what He's doing. But you have to make that decision first. And then, principle one, you must, we must, Trade in our burdens. We must figure out a way of surrendering those burdens to Him. Maybe one at a time, maybe in bunches, maybe all of them at once. I don't know, that's between you and Him. All I know is that if I can surrender one thing at a time, it lightens the load, and the lighter the load becomes, the more of my burden I can surrender. Did you ever notice in this passage, Jesus never said you wouldn't have any burdens? 
He just said, when you have these burdens, bring them to him. When you have these concerns, toss them up to him. Surrender them over to him. You're not going to live this life and not have burdens. But when you have burdens, you have a way through those burdens. Remember that old phrase. If he brought you to it, he'll get you through it. But you have to come to him and you have to surrender those burdens. I love what the psalmist wrote in 5522. If we cast our cares, our burdens on the Lord. Now listen to this. He will sustain us. That's an important word. Again, because Jesus didn't say he would remove all of them. He didn't say you would never have a burden. He simply said in the Psalms and also in the New Testament that when these burdens come, he will sustain you through them. Which translates, he will stand with you through them. He's not going to let you do it on your own. But he's not going to join you unless you ask. If you want to be God, if you want to play the role of God, he will allow you. So he put in letters, come to me and I will sustain you through whatever you have, do whatever you're facing. I mean, think about the burdens we carry. Think about these unfulfilled dreams, these failed ambitions that we had in our life, these family relationship problems, finance problems, health problems. I told Dreamer this week. And maybe that's what prompted this message. 59 years old, I'll be 60 here in about six weeks, five weeks, something like that. I have never faced more dilemmas or things that need to be decided upon in those 59 years like I have in the last year. I was driving home from working out and I thought, I, I, who do I talk to about this? And so I called my brother. He's always there to listen. And I shared with him the things that are happening in our family, the things that are happening in our life, the, the good and the bad things, all these things. And he, this is what he said to me. He said, Dave, I'm going to go light a candle at the church for you. I think that's what I should have said to him. I think I should have been the one that said, you know what? I need to take these things to God. He happens to be of the Catholic faith. And so for him, he goes and lights a candle as a prayer response to God. And after I said that, I thought to myself, my goodness, Dave. Did you really need someone to tell you that? But because we get so overwhelmed in thought, we get so mashed down by the world that we don't always think clearly we don't always have the right kind of focus and then i was reminded of this passage in john 16 verse 8 it says he that is the holy spirit will come and he will convict you on the and the world on the way you're living your life that's what he did yesterday on the phone with my brother I'm a pastor, been a pastor for all these years, and he's the one that said, I'll take it to God, because he can help. Ever find yourself out of focus, not thinking clearly because of the ways of the world? The first principle says we must trade in our burdens. The second principle says we must trade in our physical pursuits. I know if I do this, I know if I do that, if I know if I get a second job, I know if I can do these things, I know if I have the time, I know if I have it, that I can. That I can do this. I, I can accomplish these things. I know I can. I've been taught these things. My whole life as I grew up, I was taught that I can do these things. And I've even taught it to my kids. 
Don't ever let anybody tell you you can't because you can. Don't ever let me hear you say you can't because you can. I've said that to Hayden so many times. Because I know there's so many things he can't do. One of his friends is sitting right here in the third row, Jeremy. I teach all of our kids in Special Olympics. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't. But then, as I say those words, I think to myself, Dave, how many times have you thought you could and you didn't? See, it's no coincidence that Pam and Gilbert are back after a lot of months of illness. And they brought Jeremy on a day like this. Because Jeremy, I want you to hear. And Hayden, I want you to hear. I want us all to hear. If we think we can, we will fail. But I do know this. The Bible tells us we can do all things So we can do all things, but the key to doing all things is that we do it through Christ who is our strength. That's the way it's done. I believe you can. I believe you can. I believe that we can. But we have to do it in a spiritual manner. We have to do it with a spiritual connection. Because if we try to do it all in the physical, there are going to be the times... In our lives, that we can't. That we can't. Isaiah says, For those who will wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run And not be weary and they shall walk and not become faint. For those who wait upon the Lord. There's a cry in my heart. A lonely plea of desperation. Can I really go on in fear I'm working out salvation no more relying on another vision I must know know you Jesus, you, Jesus, oh, to be lost in your love. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words, here it is, first person Jesus again. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever your hearts desire and it shall be done for you. What do you need the Lord to do for you today? What burdens are you carrying? What weight has slowed you down? What shackles have caused you sleepless nights? What words of the world have caused you to think that you're on your own? We all face unknown futures. But as the saying goes, we know who holds that future. So when's the last time you looked to Jesus when it pertains to your burdens? Today I want you to Loosen, unleash, one, some, all, 
of the burdens that you are carrying. Because you've been battling for how many months? How many years have you been battling? I, I tell you today that you can't. But he can. And he will through you if you let him. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. How many here today are carrying burdens that have weighed them down it's the hands yeah yep 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 God bless you all across here all across here God bless you yes before we pray let's sing there's a